Councilman Schwartz. Here. Councilman Belcher. Councilman Goldberg. Here. Councilman Oregon. Here. Deputy Mayor Katz. Here. Deputy Mayor G. Here. Mayor Begon. Here. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided by resolution number 14-2023, sending a copy to the newspapers officially designated for 2023 by way of resolution number 2-2023, filing a copy in the township clerk's office and posting on the municipal building bulletin board, and the mayor hereby directs that this statement be included in the minutes. Thank you, Mr. Clerk, and welcome everyone to tonight's TNIC Council budget meeting. Township Administration President tonight's meeting are Dean Kaczynski, Township Manager, Doug Roussillon, Township Clerk, Clarence Barnes, Building Maintenance Manager, Ron Goodman, Volunteer Cable Caster, and John Shadanian from the law firm of Trink, Isabel, and Siddiqui. For the public's information, we are currently holding a hybrid format meeting. We have people in person and on Zoom. If our Wi-Fi at the municipal building has an issue where the Zoom meeting drops, we will aim to retrieve the connection and restart the meeting. If we are unable to continue the Zoom meeting, this council meeting will be adjourned and rescheduled. If attending this meeting in chambers, the CDC and New Jersey Health Department is recommending that individuals wear face coverings indoors and in public spaces. If possible, please try to social distance. The next televised regular council meeting will take place on Tuesday, April 4th at 6.30 p.m. The public portion of that meeting will begin at 8 p.m. The Township Council's next budget meeting of 2023 will be on Thursday, March 23rd at 7 p.m. Council did not meet in closed session. The next order of business is good and welfare and public input. Those members of the public wishing to speak will be allotted three minutes per person. Is there anyone in chambers who would like to speak? Mr. Sohn. Alan Sohn, Teaneck resident. It's and a happy privilege. birthday, sir. Happy birthday. Thank you so much. It's a privilege to be selected, uh, the uh, whole crowd uh, that's here behind me. Um, I had a chance to watch the last budget meeting, and there was a uh, superintendent of DPW, a big, strong man, uh, and he came in, and he had a, a tear in his eyes, and he said, sirs, I don't have the resources that I need to perform the functions in my department. It's not a surprise. For the past few years, we've had budgets that come in at 0%, and again, it's, it's nice to have that, but again, this has largely been done through gimmicks. It's largely been done through pushing, thing, pushing things off through bonds, through not providing our departments and our department heads with the resources they need to provide the services to the re town, residents of this township. Uh, my estimate uh, over the this year and next year is that there are budget increases of about uh, probably close to 20 percent uh, that are a backlog uh, that have been accumulating that, that need to catch up. Hopefully it'll be less. Hopefully we can find savings. Uh, I was part of the process uh, way back when in 2014 that came up with a contract for the township attorney. And one of those aspects of coming up with a contract with the township attorney uh, was including Oprah, including Oprah litigation, uh, all work that was done uh, to cover that. On the bill list that was approved on Tuesday night, there was $30,000 for Oprah work. On an annualized basis, that's $180,000. I am elated to hear that one of the promises that was made of looking at those full, those uh, long-term contracts has been looked at. We have an opportunity with the RFP that's been sent out to see that we can find labor, uh, lit litigation and legal services that are more effective. In previous years, we've had budget hearings where it was just stated, Mr. Manager, just give us a 0% budget. Those games are over. We can't pretend anymore. We need to look at every single penny that is spent in this township. And whether it's in long-term contracts for legal services, whether it's in labor, uh, whether it's in uh, engineering, uh, in all other aspects, we need to look at every single penny. And I hope that there are con concrete uh, issues and objectives where we are meeting the safety concerns. We are providing the services that our residents pay for and deserve. And that we're also simultaneously looking for those savings that can mitigate that. As bad as it is to have a 5% increase this year, we could have an increases of 10, 15, 18, 20% next year. For those who are going to be getting a revaluation who see their, revalu their valuation go up by 10% and have that compounded by the tax increase, that's going to be incredibly painful. 
it is critical that this township, that this township council, that the township, that the township manager work together to find those savings, to find real changes to help all of the residents of this township. I look forward to your work in this behalf. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Sohn. Mr. Clerk, do we have anyone on Zoom? No? Dr. Powers? Chuck Powers, Teaneck. I'm going to begin by talking a little more generally. And asking the question is, who is it that decides that the public shall almost invariably be, be the last to know, and we only get to be told when, in fact, something that must be brought into the public occurs. Let me give you an example. On the 5th of January last year, this town found out that it was, had, was going to have to do a reassessment. Nothing about that was told to the public until the ordinance had to be brought forward in which we were told about the fact that we needed that reassessment in a period when you were forced, I believe, to have to do a truncated competition for the, uh, for the people that you were choosing to actually support the, the assessor in that process. And I believe you could have saved $200,000 if you had been, if that had been a competitive process. My question is, who was it? Was it the attorney, the manager, some part of council that said, the public shouldn't know about that until we have to tell them. Is the same thing true about the settlement on Stop and Shop? You folks passed, your predecessors passed, a settlement way back on the 20th of September. From what I can tell, on the basis of the Oprah I have, there is no settlement. There's only a signal signature, one by the, by the mayor and a, a, a second one by the by the clerk the same thing is true about tonight's process you folks all got a, a a board book last week you could see it you had it today i finally was able to reach the clerk's office and finally the rest of the town the thirty-nine thousand nine hundred, or whatever, however you want to count it only had access to that document for half this day now, there's a whole bunch of things that I've been able to look at, and I'd love to have to be able to talk, talk to you about some of the concerns I have. I'd like to know, for example, why we have a 69% increase in what we have to pay on our, on our self-insurance fund. How much of that is legal cost as compared to actual settlements? Because the settlements I'm looking at are tiny by comparison to that huge increase. We need to understand that, and that's not actually laid out anywhere. We need to know how many as compared to authorized fire people we have as compared to how many we actually have on, on, on staff and what to do about the fact that we're gonna to have to add two in the course of the year. And the same thing's true about the police. We're way, way below the 110 we used to have. We only now call for, I believe it's for, 90, for 93 authorized fire people, uh, police people. We don't have, we only have, I believe it's 88. It is a real problem, folks. Thank you you have to make sure that you understand as you go Thank through you, this Dr. process Powers. that you understand you, that these, these issues better than Thank we you, can sir. possibly do in Mr. the Mr. Clerk, of the is there anyone on Zoom? Need. Nobody on Zoom. Anyone in chambers want to speak? Seeing no hands. Good and welfare is closed. Does anyone on council want to make any remarks? Mr. Mayor? That Mr. Schwartz? Yeah, sorry. I just wanted to thank. Yeah, you know, just in listening to Dr. Powers, I just wanted to thank the council um, for the RFP process. I know we discussed uh, a quicker process, and now we're taking it back slowly, going through the steps. There's a lot of legal uh, and legal terms and desires that we have, and, and I just wanted to thank the council the other night for um, the other day for making sure that we're going to do this over a, a more proper and appropriate process, not a quick rush process. Um, as you know, like with the reassessment, we, we um, came back and we did get that cut. Um, so time is important. And I thank the council for putting the time out on the RFP process so we can really, really analyze it and, and drill down on it. Thank you very much, everybody. 
Thank you, Mr. Schwartz. Anybody else on council? No. Mr. Stone, I do apologize for not being able to call on you at the last meeting, and we do appreciate your comments because we care deeply about our DPW, and we are going to work hard to make sure our staff has all the tools necessary to do a good job for our residents. And thank you for your comments about the budget process and the RFP process, as well as you, Dr. Powers. We, we appreciate your comments, gentlemen. Mr. Manager, is there anything you would like to add or no? Sure, I brought up uh, staffing with the police department during my PowerPoint presentation. That's been online since the, the morning following my presentation. That was addressed. The GIF assessments were addressed and the reason why. Uh, I, I clearly stated that at the uh, budget presentation. And, you know, again, it has to do with a premium increase of 20%. And it had to do with an added assessment for all the municipalities in the GIF. So that was clearly explained. And we did bring up that we received a letter from the county some time back that the town would require a revaluation. So this should be uh, old news. Thank you, Mr. Manager. The next order of business is the budget discussion. Mr. Manager, would you like to lead us in this? Sure, I sure will. I'll bring up uh, Chief McGurr. And for, for council, uh, if you can turn to tab five, page 61 in your books, if you have it. And it's it's account uh, it's account two forty, uh, page sixty one of uh, and it's tab five. So what we'll do, uh, chief, is we'll we'll cover your operating expenses, and you have, if I'm correct here, you have seventeen sub accounts, and just so that for the public's uh, knowledge, we. Uh, adopted in 2020, uh, a total of uh, $330,820 in your operating budget. Uh, after meeting with you several times, reviewing your sub accounts, um, we were able to actually come in with a decrease this year of uh, uh, minus 1.08%. Um, so this year, uh, we're requesting $327,254. And in your review of the sub accounts, can you just explain some of the more significant items, Chief? Uh, yes, sir. Um, there's a few items that we were able to remove um, by bringing 911 back to TNAC with our new dispatch center. Uh, we saved the $30,000 that was going to the county. Um, in addition, there was a GTBM uh, no longer providing certain uh, CAD management support. That was another 20,000 that we were able to remove from the budget. Um, uh, there were uh, several minor increases, certain dues that have gone up uh, for different organizations that our department has uh, maintained association with and certain service contracts, um, such as our contract with LawSoft, uh, the VCS POS software. Um, there's been minor increases there. Uh, the WTH technology, which provides mapping integration service for our 911 dispatch. There was an increase there. Um, we have uh, $1,200 for the beast evidence management system, which we had been paying, but was in fact into our budget in the past. So we put that in. Uh, additionally, several dues. Uh, we also uh, signed up for the Biased Crime Officer Association, which was new $150. Uh, the New Jersey Public Safety Accreditation Coalition is a new one for 400. So most of them are relatively uh, minor increases. Uh, ammunition has gone up uh, several. The portable radio uh, <coughs> replacement program contract with the Co uh, Cody Cobra, which is through the prosecutor's office. Again, uh, just mm -hmm. minor increases here and there. And chief, the audit has to be done in 2024, correct? The property room? Audit? Yes. Uh, yes, sir. Well, every year for accreditation, we have to do an annual audit. Um, the full audit, which would be required based on the attorney general guideline due to my uh, promotion and the change in the department head, um, that we were looking to uh, put off to the next year if we can. Okay. And what's the cost of a, a general cost of an audit? In, uh, for about $20,000. $20,000, 20, 20, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And with regards to staffing, again, I'll, I'll repeat myself. Um, we never had 110 officers that may be the uh, authorized strength in an ordinance. We've never had 110 police officers 
uh, that um, that never took place. Uh, the authorized strength right now is 97. Um, and again, as I've discussed several times, uh, it, it's very difficult to replace staff. Uh, we've had resignations that we've never seen before, a couple this year, a couple last year, probably, what would you say, 30, 35, 40% turnover over the last three years? Yes, uh, we retirements and resignations, yes, sir. And very difficult for civil service to keep up with the testing, especially during the COVID. They're trying to keep up, as I mentioned uh, to council, uh, the last police test was given last year, only 27 uh, Teaneck residents uh, were on the list. We've exhausted that already of the 27. Uh, we only were able to hire, what was it, four? Four, Chief? Yes, four out of the 27. So we've exhausted the Teaneck residents. Um, it does allow us to transition to county residents. However, uh, we're looking at five uh, alternate route candidates that are currently in various police academies and they should graduate in June. So we're trying to give them conditional offers of employment that would allow us to really put them on the road fairly quickly with a field training officer. It generally takes three months to um, get yes, them out in the field, to go through field training um, and uh, before we let them out on, on their own. So this is one way that we can expedite uh, the hirings. Uh, the problem is this is not a TNEC problem. Uh, this is a uh, municipality problem. This is a county problem. This is a state problem. It's a problem all over this country with trying to hire police officers. So we are doing the best we can with hirings. We're very aggressive with it. Uh, if we can get these five alternate route candidates, uh, we certainly will. And again, they do um, uh, graduate sometime in the latter end of June. Uh, and uh, my goal is to give them conditional offers of employment contingent upon them successfully completing the academy uh, and uh, approval of the budget so that we have them ready to go uh, come July 1st. And they'll be with the field training officer. And then we'll have to work on trying to uh, hire uh, any additional openings for uh, 2024. But it's a it's a problem. You know, if we uh, we're going to have to get away from hiring Teaneck residents. Uh, there's just not enough residents that are interested in taking the test that pass the test. Uh, again, this is just not not a not a Teaneck problem, but we're doing the best we can with the resources we have to uh, fill the ranks due to resignations. We just had two recent ones. Uh, and these are officers that were on a job for a short time, correct, yeah. Chief? Yes, one was uh, just under a year, and the other one uh, had a couple of years with yes. us. And some are just getting out of law enforcement as a whole. Others are maybe transitioning or transferring to a different uh, law enforcement agency. So, uh, again, it's it's problematic. I, I understand it. Uh, I'm not happy about being understaffed. creates a strain on the department, but it's not from lack of trying to fill these positions um, we, we just don't have we just don't have the people uh, to fill these roles so uh, but we've never had mayor we've never had 110 officers at the, at the TNAC police department um, do you want to just cover the capital for police to go over their ask or if you have any questions about operations does anyone have any questions before we proceed to capital or you can save your questions until after capital totally up to council Okay, let's proceed. With I'm going to save my question for after capital. All right, cool. All right, so uh, capital, let me just, uh, capital is on tab six and uh, page one. And there's really not too many items for the PD in, in capital. Um, what we're asking for this year for the police department, uh, some new radar units that, uh, that really total about $11,000. Uh, tasers they need, which uh, total $60,000. Uh, video cameras and and chief that's for the the police cars that's that's correct sir uh for the police cars they already have body cameras but the uh, video cameras for the police cars total 200,000 and uh, office furnishings about 60,000 we need to start replacing some of the old furniture that's probably been in there since 1994 i guess when we uh transitioned over 95 95 so there's not a lot in there for the PD. If you add that up, that's uh, about $331,000 for 
uh, for the police department and capital. So again, if you go back to go back to operations on page 61, uh, their operations budget is is down uh, one a uh, little less than a little more than one percent, uh, one point zero eight percent. And again, last year we adopted three hundred thirty thousand eight hundred and twenty dollars. Uh, this year, uh, we're requesting three hundred twenty-seven thousand two hundred fifty-four dollars. Deputy Mayor Katz, you have a question, sir? Yeah. So, so you mentioned about the car videos. Where we decide that we're storing those those videos, or how are we storing the videos? Is that through the prosecutor's office? No, that's on our server. Yeah, Chief, it's a cloud explain. service. It's a cloud service through the manufacturer. And through the manufacturers, is there an additional storage fee? We pay for that an annual fee, yes. It's uh, all the body camera systems out there are all now are limiting you just to cloud service. Um, their reasoning being that um, to try and maintain all the different servers if people had them individually in their departments uh, was just not productive for them to, and costly to try and keep up with. For every department to have their own server and the amount of uh, footage that's being produced is a tremendous draw. So they can... Um, you know, they charge for it, substantial amount, um, but we did our research over the time when we were looking at the body cameras, uh, Axon being one of the top in the field, but their cost was just prohibitive uh, for us. So that's how we ended up with WatchGuard. Got it. Okay. Anybody else have any questions before we proceed? Mr. Manager? Good. We're good with the police department? Yep. Chief, thank you for everything you do. Thank you to all our officers. And thank you for working so hard on this budget. Wait, Mr. Mayor, I have one quick question. Councilwoman Goldberg? Yeah, on the radar, um, it says in the notes here that there was that there's you're required to purchase a new machine at twenty thousand dollars, and the item was listed in prior capital budget request, but I don't see the twenty thousand dollar radar in the budget in the capital request this year. Was that prior year, or is that somewhere else in here that I'm not seeing? On page 65, Mr. Manager. Did, did you say what page? I'm sorry. On page 65, 65, under radar, the justification, it talks about buying a new machine for $20,000 and the item was listed in prior year capital requests, but I don't see it this year. Is that a separate radar unit in addition to what we're looking at here? Is it the alcohol test? That would be number one, that was the Alco test. Um, the Alco test machine, which is proposed for 2024. Uh, item number two is the radar units, which was 11,000 for uh, our request for the four LIDAR units to replace the existing radar units in the vehicles. So that the 20, the 20,000 for the Alco test is for 2024. Correct, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Anybody else? Thank you, Chief. Right, Appreciate thank you. you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, we have Chief Bergstall from the Fire Department, and I'll refer um, to Council page 85, AF5. That covers the Fire Department. Turn there. That's account 265. So again, page 85. And in 2022, uh, Mayor, we, we adopted $359,912. Uh, this year, you're seeing an increase of about 30%, and we'll explain the reason why. Uh, that goes up to $470,112. Uh, one of the things I, I am going to change uh, is the monies that are going into uh, sub account 246, which is air dispatch services. So we put 200,000 in this year's operating budget uh, with the intent that we're going to share dispatch with Hackensack. Uh, there's still some fiber optic cable that needs to be uh, purchased and in place before we can do that. So that 200,000, we can cut in half to 100,000. And that 100,000 extra we're gonna put into the salary budget. And that will include the hiring of two additional firefighters. So and we should be able to do uh, the firefighters we want to hire for them uh, on July 1st. So instead of two, we'll do four. And it's the result of uh, reducing 
um, line item 246 to go from 200 to 100. And we'll put that 100 in, in the salary budget. So that will allow us to hire four firefighters for uh, July 1st. Um, so, uh, Chief, I'll let you go over uh, again your sub account here and anything significant. Uh, we'll cover uh, cover some capital items, and we'll, it will, uh, I'll have you answer any any questions that come from council. Good evening, Council. I'm your fire chief, Joseph Birchsold. Um, with most of my sub accounts, due to unfortunately COVID and um, other unforeseen costs, they all seem to go up uh, a small amount each year. There was really no significant jumps in any one of our budgets. Um, if you go to account number 213, I can. that's our CAD maintenance and support system. That's our records management system that we uh, integrated a couple of years ago. Unfortunately, that's an outside vendor and we will see an increase every year with them, but that has reduced paper. Uh, everything is now electronic. We have better documents, better filing, better record management, and that also allows us or part of the shared service agreement with Hackensack. Go to account number 240, that's um, based on the fact of hiring four firefighters, the cost, the actual initial cost of hiring those firefighters, their turn turnout gear, their SCBA face pieces, their boots, their helmets, their gloves, their hoods, as well as the cost to send them to the academy. Currently, we have five individuals uh, attending the academy right now. They started in January. They'll be finishing up uh, in the next week or so. And then they will be sent to the EMS Academy. So we should actually see them on the line sometime the end of May. Um, not to get ahead of ourselves, we're also anticipating, since we exhausted our current uh, hiring list, that's when the next hiring list should be due out the end of May. And we will start that process of rehiring all over again. And Joe, not to cut, uh, Chief, not to cut you off, but again, we have no fire list. The new, uh, the old exam, yeah, the old exam, there was a, a new exam given in December, early December. Uh, so we have yet to get the results of that. Generally takes about six months. So we do not have um, a, a certification of eligible for appointments from civil service for the title of, of firefighter. Again, this is not us delaying the process. Uh, we're waiting on civil service to, uh, to score the grade and provide us with a, a, cert they call it a certification of eligible for appointments. Correct. And then once we have that, we generally have a, a month or two to do background investigations, and then it is a sizable amount of time while they spend at the academy, almost six months worth of training before we actually see them on the line, which does incur a short understaffing while they are employees of the township. They are not technically on a fire truck. And the turnover rate, Chief, over the last, uh, say, two years, three years, similar to the police? Yeah, we're losing uh, four to six pretty much almost every year. Um, and that goes back to the 1994-1995 buyout and the mass hirings that we did back then. The other big significant account is number 246. That's the shared service dispatch agreement. That would be the fee that we would be incurring to pay the Hackensack to actually take over our dispatching, which would then also increase our physical staffing on the fire truck because we will no longer have a firefighter sitting behind a desk, but they will be actually riding the apparatus. So we pick up actually four individuals, one every tour for a total of four. Yep. No, again, not to cut you off again, that was the goal. That was the vision early on. Uh, the fire dispatch area is uh, outdated for us to renovate it uh, would probably cost us three quarters of a million dollars up to hire civilian dispatchers. We'd have to hire at least four or five of them, incur their costs, their, uh, their pension contributions, their health care costs. Uh, so this makes sense. The goal for me was always to get the firefighters back out on the truck and not sitting on the desk 24-7. So for me, um, this is the right decision, has always been the right decision. And once we finish up with some fiber optic, uh, again, we'll make that transition. And, and as I said, and the chief has said, um, you know, this comes with when we do make that transition, it's called automatic aid. And um, Joe, you want to, chief, you want to just explain a little the benefits to uh, the, the residents here of Teaneck? Sure. Um, just if I could read back a little bit with, uh, the new 911 systems coming out there again, the updates, the increases, there's no way you'd be able to financially long-term project having two complete 
high-end 911 systems in town. It would be cost prohibitive. So by us moving to Hackensack, that allows us to share that cost. They have the upgraded dispatch center. They have the upgraded 911s. We, I guess, uh, incur part of that burden, part of that uh, 200,000. Um, it also incurs or allows us to, what does the manager related to automatic age. They will know when we get the report of fire in a resident, they will be taking the call as they're dispatching us or TNIC units, they will also be dispatching Hackensack units to support us. Therefore, now you're getting additional apparatus on the initial run based on caller information. The old way or the current way that it's being processed or taken care of is they literally listen to us dispatch. They wait the three to five minutes for our tour commander to arrive on a scene or an engine company, report a working fire, then they dispatch. So you're looking at an eight to nine minute delay before mutual aid arrives. Here, we'll take it down to an extra minute for them to come across the river. So you're looking at maybe a four to five minute response from Hackensack on a report of initial working fire. So we'll have more apparatus, more personnel, quicker and faster on a scene to a residential structure fire in Teaneck. Thank you, Chief. Uh, any other line items that you want to cover? Uh, anything of significance that has changed from last year? Uh, really, everything is kind of in the ballpark with the exception of the shared uh, dispatch service uh, line item everything is for the most part give or take um a few dollars here and there due to uh really cost of living increases is really not a significant uh, increase in your overall budget and if you did take the shared dispatch out of course you'd be probably flat or under from uh, from last year's correct all right um uh, mayor uh, i'm sorry no of course uh, Deputy Mayor G. Sure. So I have a question on, I guess, the line item 240, the new employees, um, which really is 147,000 once you move the 100 over, right? Um, so if we lose four to six people every year, I'm just curious why there's a need for that big jump this year. Why wouldn't, if we lost four to six, why wouldn't that cover? Wouldn't it just be a trade off of the new five starting this year? No. Um, that's all for their personal equipment. So ah. that's you're talking uniforms, although we take the old uniforms back in from those employees, the brand new employee gets a new set of you know, uniforms, dress uniforms, new set of turnout gear, turnout gear has to be fitted. For example, if I retire tomorrow, you would hope that, you know, the next guy is not six foot tall. Again, we got to get them new turnout gear. So they get a complete set of new equipment, unfortunately. All right. So follow up question. If we're losing four to six a year, wouldn't we need... Uh, enough to cover the cost of five new people every year. So I'm just, this budget item seems really low. Um, if you're, if you know, you're going to have to replace five plus people every year. Um, I'm sorry. I don't actually follow you. It, it, it really hasn't always been that way. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Deputy mayor, where we were losing five or six, it, it's been the last probably three years, four years or so. Uh, again, we can hire more. It, it's a question of, what do we want to do with the budget? Uh, I'm, I'm all for filling all the police spots, all the fire spots. Uh, it's a question of if council directs me and says, hey, fill all the police spots, fine. Fill all the fire spots. We'll include it in here. It's just a question of uh, what we want to do with the budget. Got it. Thank you. Did that answer your question? I'm... Okay. Councilwoman Vilcher. Question is, are we going to talk about that line item under capital improvement uh, fire engine? How does that relate? So we, we can switch to, again, to uh, capital for 2023 for the fire department. Uh, you know, great question. Um, you know, uh, the chief and I have had some discussion. Originally, we had a ladder truck in and uh, we had the fire engine or, or squad, whatever they're going to call it, in uh, a ladder truck. And I'll let the chief expand on this in a minute. Generally takes about uh, two to three years to get once it's ordered. Uh, an engine may be a little less time. A uh, ladder truck is probably running close to $2 million. Uh, the engine, we have 1.2 million. Uh, and, and after some discussions, you know, we decided to uh, remove the ladder truck for now and uh, possibly put that in. I'm pretty sure I put that in uh, next year's in a six-year capital improvement plan um, uh, for a ladder truck. But this year we want to stick with the with the fire engine or squad, whatever uh, the chief is going to call it. But chief, you want to talk about that a little bit? Sure. So a frontline engine, you have three frontline fire engines, one frontline ladder truck currently in service 24-7, 365. 
doing close to 3,400 runs a year. They don't all do 3,400 runs a year. Some of them do eight, 900, 1,000 runs. They're good for about 10 years life expectancy. Then what happens is we take them out of frontline service and we put them in reserve. We keep them another 10 years. Teenage traditionally is keeping them 15 to almost 20 years. Hence why we just sold two 30-year-old fire engines. So when that frontline engine goes out of service, you have to replace it with something. If not, the company doesn't exist. So we always have reserve equipment. Generally, currently we have two reserve engines and one reserve ladder. The engine we're looking to change is a Suffin. It was purchased in 2011. It's currently undergone a bunch of uh, repairs and is uh, actually up at the manufacturing plant currently getting about $16,000 worth of repairs to it. So again, the longer you keep it, the more repairs and the costly to repairs. And at some point, um, you can no longer repair it. It will That will replace this reserve rig, which will be sold. This is a 1995 E1, which you can no longer really get parts for. We were recently able to get the, the pump re-welded. So we're relying on old equipment. At some point, you know, they stopped making parts. So the 1995 would be sold. This would be the reserve. And you would have a new engine replacing this one. Um, with that being said, um, it behooves you every 10 years to replace your engine. So you constantly have a rotating in and out stock to always guarantee that the fire engine is getting out the door. It's getting out safely. It's efficiently. It's more modern. It's safer. It's providing a better, more reliable piece of equipment to the township. Question, please. Okay. Continue. Yeah, I just had a question um, operationally. I know that there was an engine that was removed from the Northeast um, station. What impact will this new engine have on, uh, in terms of having that in, 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 in actual, the resource there? I don't know if that um, is a question for the manager or for you. That's a very complex question. So uh, first of all, this goes back to 2009 when the fire service in Teaneck was downsized from, I think, 102 down to our current staffing in 93. For the next couple of years after that, we played, if you want to call it short term, a shell game, where if you had enough people working that day, um, you moved stuff around. Um, sometimes you had two people on a ladder truck, which is not recommended by the NFPA. Currently, we have three. The recommendation is four on a piece of equipment for staffing, for availability, for safety purposes. So it's not just, if you were to buy this engine, this engine would not affect that and be able to put that engine back. That's your short answer. You would have to do a lot more to get that engine back. Like what, for instance? You'd have to hire a lot more firefighters and you'd have to buy another engine. In order to get an engine back in the Northeast Correct. fire yes. station. Yes. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Schwartz. Sorry, if I may ask the chief a few questions, first of all. And, and I know the fire service a little well, though after 24 years, I'm about to retire as a life member. Um, I can give you my turnout gear, chief, if you want, but I'm not six feet tall. Um, the uh, squad four has been spending quite a bit of time at headquarters while we renovate um, while we renovate these, the, the work being done at, at um, Station 4. Is that correct? That is correct. Right. So the water to parts of town uh, on the west side of the tracks is both coming out of headquarters. So there's, we have right now we have a squad and a ladder in headquarters, correct? That is correct. Um, so then that's been how many more? I mean, it looks like they're just starting to work there. How many more? How much more time do we think we have on the work being done at Station 4? Uh, Eight I'm months, 10 months? About three to six months. Three to six months. And how long it's been going on for? About six or eight months? Uh, since last spring. Got it. So we do. So we're, 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 we have two first dues. We have two two pieces coming out of the north, uh, out of out of the headquarters. Got it. Um, and just uh, Councilwoman Belcher, I, I spent quite a bit of time speaking with people about the fire coverage on the northwest and northeast parts of town. Uh, MapQuest has been phenomenal on this. Uh, that the whoever placed Station Four and headquarters where they are actually is is actually phenomenal. Um, there was a lot of concerns about the water at fourteen. 
25 scenic road, our new senior home. Uh, our new senior home is going to be being hit right now. They're both coming out of headquarters, but when ultimately when station four is being done, we're going to have water coming out of station four and a ladder coming out of headquarters. And they are quicker and closer than almost any other place in town based on the placement of station four, literally being at state and Windsor. So um, I urge anyone that has specific questions about fire coverage uh, to look at the distances on MapQuest, it really, or Google Maps, whatever we call it. It really shows you to the minute um, the distance is there. But I just wanted to get some clarity on right now that the, the two pieces and how soon we can have it back at Station 4. So thank you very much. Chief, Mr. I have a Mayor. Really quick. Um, Mr. Mayor. Second, I'll be quick. I promise, Council Member Goldberg. And I think I know the answer to this because I work for a firefighter during my day job. But when you buy a f new fire truck, why does it take so long to arrive? The uh, fire trucks are custom made. So first you sign the contract, then they do a parts bill list. They used to be anywhere from 12 to 14 months before delivery. Um, ever since COVID, now they're out the three year delivery time. And the prices have just about doubled. Councilwoman Goldberg, you had a question? Um, I just have a, a couple of questions. Um, the, the current apparatuses that we have, how many are coming due within that you know 15 year lifespan over the next three years? Uh, you'll once you replace this one, if you this current cycle, you'll have the brand, two brand new squads, which were purchased in 2021, 22. So you'd be looking at 32 for their 10 year life. Um, and I know that the as manager ladder, at as far as that's that's as far as engines go, as far mm -hmm. as ladders go, you yeah. have a, a ladder coming up on 20, well, in 14, so or 2014, uh, 2024. That will need to be replaced to cycle back out. Okay, so that answered that next question. Um, and then I know that um, at one version of this, there was both the ladder and the engine um, requested. Uh, you, I just wanted to hear from your, in your opinion, the the engine or the ladder, which is the greater need for the community. Uh, at this point, we just went with the the physical years. That is the engine is older. It's a uh, 2011. The ladder is a 2014. The only other condition with the ladder is the ladder was actually already recycled once. That was a 1986 ladder truck that was sold and somehow got back to the township. So the ladder and the pump on that vehicle are 1986 vintage. Where the cabin just want... are 2014. One more tough question. Um, and I, I would just like you to, you know, think, um, do you feel that you have the staffing and, you know, resources needed that are necessary to provide the township residents with the level of safety and protection that they deserve? Uh, I will always ask for more staffing. I'd be crazy. You're not a good fire chief. If I didn't, ideally you should have a fire truck on every corner with two extra firefighters standing there for a level of safety. Um, but no, the residents of Teaneck with our staffing, with our personnel, with our what I'm given um, on a daily basis, they are very safe. And also remind you that a lot of this is contractual. So the amount of employees I physically have working is based on two, uh, two bargaining units, FMBA, along with a labor and a manager that I don't necessarily, we can't necessarily uh, change, right? And then there's also state laws and statutes i.e. military leave, family leave. So there's individuals off with that, injury leave. So um, we manage pretty well with our staffing as best we can to provide the best and safest protection for the residents of Teaneck. Deputy Mayor Katz, you had a question, sir? Yes. Chief, now with the um, increase in the amount of people that have cell phones, do you find that the boxes are still being used often? The uh, pull boxes that specifically, not the ones that are... Um, cellular but more the ones that have the wire connecting back to the um head yeah the hq okay i do not have the actual breakdown we have 315 of those boxes in town there are some that physically sit on a pole by themselves and are, are for manually pulling to get you to that corner however most of them 90 percent of them are tied to houses of worship uh buildings libraries police station fire department schools um community centers uh, nursing homes. So when that alarm trips in that building, that alarm comes directly to the fire department. So there's no, someone doesn't need to call 911. There's no delay. If it was to go to a central station, 
I don't know if anyone has Central Station. Your Central Station monitoring company could be out in Illinois. They could be during a, a tornado. Their alarm, they may call you 15, 20 minutes an hour later, you know, and call the police department. Oh, your burglar alarm went off, your fire alarm went off. There's no state statutes, no state laws on how quickly you have to notify you. This is an instantaneous notification. Um, to me, it's the best system. It's worth maintaining. It's worth keeping in service. It provides quick, fast, reliable alarm system notification directly to the fire department, bypassing all the middlemen. And we get there out the door quicker, faster to handle any problem in that building or residence. So, thank you. Mr. Mayor. Oh, sorry. Is that Karen? It's me. The yeah. Yours, Thanks, just a quick question. We switched over to the squads from the conventional engine. We got two of those. Those were our last two pieces of apparatus. Um, are we going to something different now or are we just calling it an engine? Why the change? What do we prefer? What works better for the town? Um, the next vehicle we purchase will be a squad engine. Um, okay. You have two rescue trucks. And if you go way back in the budget, you would be replacing, asking for a rescue truck last year at over a million dollars because you would have needed to replace that. You would have sold the one, which is now currently in Bogota, which is over 30 years. It was in 1986. Uh, that we sold two years ago for a couple dollars to Bogota. So the, the the older one, which basically ever since the short staffing of the fire department basically sat at fire headquarters and collected dust. It actually is very, very inefficient. If there was an extrication and the engine company was not, or the ladder company is not physically in the building, they would have to drive back to headquarters, switch onto this rescue truck with the extrication equipment and then drive to the call. So by selling the vehicle, and condensing some of the equipment, we were able to put two sets of extrication equipment on two vehicles that are staffed 24-7, 365. That gives you the advantage. If there is more than one extrication in town, or if you need to, just the simple fact that you have an extrication, you're getting two pieces with redundancy, extra equipment to the scene quicker, faster than ever before. That, that, my question was, this new engine that we're getting is essentially going to be like the squads that we have now. The Correct. same piece of equipment. Okay, thank you. Councilwoman Belcher. Uh, yeah, just have a question. I'm sure that, you know, you guys, you you have worked your budget, you've fine-tuned um, as much as you can. I mean, clearly 1.2 million is a lot of money. 30% increase over um, last year is, is a lot. Um, net, net, how do you feel this, this particular capital improvement will um, you know, aid our community and where would you place this? Would this be rotating throughout the town or is this like, I mean, how is this like housed? Is it housed in one particular location to be shared by the entire town? How does that work? Uh, I'll, I'll try to answer this as best I can. I'm, I'm not really clear on what you're looking at. So we have three engine companies in three different firehouses across the town. So this new brand new engine would eventually replace engine three up here on Teaneck Road, 370 Teaneck Road. That engine would go to company two down on Cedar Lane across from the IHOP. This 2011 engine would become the reserve engine. So. Oh, you answered my question, thank you. Because that engine does the most amount of runs. Mr. Manager, that's true. And, and just to keep everything in perspective, we purchased uh, the two squads or engines. What is it, 23 and 24? Yes. Um, about three years ago, and we got two engines for a million dollars. Yes. And again, as the chief said, we were able to equip them with extrication equipment, both vehicles. That puts things in perspective. Now, a new engine in 2023 is going to run about $1.2 million. So if we had the Gosh, if we uh, knew this was going to happen, we, you know, we should have bought four engines back uh, in um, 2020. You and the rest of the fire service. Yes. We also sold the rescue truck to Ramsey for 125000 which was equipment, all purchased equipment for those two squads. So that offset some of that purchase. And, and the ladder truck is in uh, for 2024 capital. Again, we... Um, we have 1.8 million in there. We may have to adjust it. I guarantee you'll have to adjust it probably by $400,000. You're going to make me sweat, Joe. Um, it's not me. Believe me. All right. Uh, I don't make um, these prices. And, and again, just keep in mind what the chief had said. Once we're up and running with Hackensack Dispatch, you're going to have automatic aid. So really staffing is going to almost double at 
any call that uh, comes in of, of a, they call it, I guess, a signal five chief. Uh, uh, yes, there's a report, any reported working fire. Yes. So. Deputy Mayor Mr. G Manager, can I, can I request that the council get a inventory of the fire apparatuses and their age, just so we get a sense of what the, the future, the next few years we might be looking at and generally based on no engines, ladders, et cetera. Just, just, done. Okay. If you can send I'll that out to that. the I'll council. The chief. Absolutely. And we'll get that to you uh, by tomorrow. Deputy Mayor G. Thank you. Um, so if we think the cost of the ladder truck is going to go up, why wouldn't we consider just getting it done this year? I'll I'll do whatever Tax council. <laughs> I mean, yes. I, I don't know. If Given the last budget committee meeting, yeah. it's like, why not just front load that if it's going to be cheaper this year anyway? I'm fine with it. I'm I'm fine with it. If you what do you want to replace the engine with the ladder? No, I'm, I'm would do it both? do both. If it's cheaper this year I, than next year, and we're gonna have a crazy year next year anyway. Yeah, that's what you have to look at. Yeah, it's, it's in a, you know we'll have to. Uh, you're only putting five percent. Uh, Ninety thousand dollars. So, you know that's again we can put it in there. It's a decision council will have to make. I'm sure the so, chief will be happy about that. Just. Wild idea, and if, if we did do that, where would that ladder? It would just replace the oldest truck. That would replace would the 2014. The 2014 would replace the 2000. And... The 2009, and then that 2009 would could be sold. Or my recommendation, because unfortunately with ladder trucks, they're very hard to get. Uh, they're very hard, as we just went through when this one got damaged at Hackensack Spring, and we had a rent one for almost $500 a day. Wow. I would recommend we try to find a place to keep three ladder trucks because they're they're not something you can get anywhere. Um, engines, most municipalities, if you need to you know, have them send you an engine for a couple hours, a couple days, they're not going to care, right? But you ask for a ladder truck, most municipalities only have one ladder truck. City of Hackensack has three for that same reason. They Because if one goes out of service, you need a spare. And then when that that spares in service at a working fire. And now you recall people, you want another ladder truck to, for your town because someone else is not going to send you a ladder truck because they don't want to jeopardize their town. So it might be beneficial at that point to keep that a couple more years and hold on to it for a little while. Um, if it's okay, uh, Mr. Schwartz, are you there, sir? Since yes. you're the only firefighter on this council, what do you think of that idea, sir? Just out of So we, we originally discussed a year ago about, uh, about the fire truck. About the about the um about the ladder, and we put it onto capital, and then we put everything onto capital, everything onto capital. And capital became this great Christmas shopping list that at one point was sixteen million dollars. Um, I did a little you know thinking over time, and, and we all know that we have a lot of ladder trucks in Bergen County, and what the Teaneck Fire Department is doing with their um, mutual dispatching is incredible, and, and what you're doing obviously with the automatic aid is is obviously it is great, even though everyone in the county listens to the dispatch. The said that dispatchers setting them out immediately is, is, is excellent. Any chance over the next year that we talk with Englewood and with Hackensack about um, trucks, about mutual aid, uh, mutual aid ladder trucks? And I say that because we'll have a lot of money to float around here because right now, two to three million dollars on a ladder truck. Um, and maybe we get another engine. I'm just talking out loud and don't have to answer this now. But getting ourselves another engine and then working with either Englewood, I'm not even sure if Englewood has a fire uh, a fire truck or even knows what a fire truck is. But um, any chance that Hackensack wants to help us with mutual aid on ladder trucks for, for a cost? I'm not sure I follow you. What do you mean for a cost? They have three, they have five, they have three fire trucks, three ladders right now. Sorry, I, I can't, they have three ladders. Yes. Hack and Sack has three ladders. I believe there's two on it. Uh, there's two on it. One out of headquarters, and I forgot where the other one's coming out of right now. Do they, they have any? Headquarters. I'm sorry? They all come out of headquarters. They have a primary right. ladder, a backup ladder, and then a really old tiller. Correct. Do they have any desire for some money, monetary exchange to be our ladder and giving us another new engine at headquarters? Just something to think about. Or do we always want to have a ladder company in town, but at a cost of two to three million dollars? You always want to have your own ladder for the simple reason: if they're at a fire and their ladder is being used, you're not getting it. And that's with any mutual aid town. If they have their own incident, they are not sending you help. You're on your own. You'll have to try to find somebody else. As it is on a working fire, we get an engine, we get a ladder from Englewood, and we get a ladder from Hackensack. 
Council. What do you get from what? Sorry, what do you get from Bergenfield on that on the mutual aid? Uh, an engine. Engine. Okay. I I tried. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No, quick, thank you, sir. Quick Council question. Wilcher. Yeah, thank you. Um, you know these numbers are kind of dizzying. Oh, they're <laughs> and, very dizzying, man. They, yeah, I mean, and, and I understand that the supply chain is creating this, and I think the economy is as well. I think it's just people being greedy, personally, and that too, <laughs> of course, that too. Um, but I, I really, I mean, I, it seems like you know we're embarking upon this sh shared service initiative between us and Hackensack, and 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 to the extent that we can see what we can glean from that. Um, also, it seems like you know our congressman does quite a bit in terms of trying to identify grant monies for firefighters. Um, you know, I, I'm constantly getting his emails and, and, and so forth. So have we exhausted all grant opportunities as it speaks, as it pertains to firefighting? Uh, we are absolutely trying very hard. Last year, we got $480,000 for radios. That's something you would have you had to buy that you're not buying. Uh, this year, after tomorrow night, we'll be submitting for a safer grant. A safer grant will give us four firefighters for three years at no cost to the township, if we get it. So as well as we put in a grant for thermal imaging cameras and uh, multi-gas meters. So we, yes, we try to scrape every nickel, every bond, dollar we can. We try, there's other grant opportunities other than FEMA. There's like firehouse subs and a couple others. We, we, we spent a lot of our years trying to get some of those grants in the door. For example, this, this ladder truck, the 2009, was actually a grant. So you didn't actually pay for this one. Unfortunately, fire trucks, in order to get a grant for a fire truck, you gotta be over 30 years old. And I don't know if you really wanna risk. Anybody else on council have any questions? Mr. Manager, Chief, thank you for everything that you and our firefighters do for the town. We appreciate you guys. And thank, thank you for working so hard on the budget with us, you too. Do as well. Thank you, Chief. Mr. Manager? Everybody? Yep. Next, do we have uh, the last uh, budget for tonight is legal. And if you refer to page 41 uh, of tab five, you'll find that. And we have Mr. Shadane in here tonight. And legal falls under uh, budget account 155 and really covers a, a variety of uh, different accounts. I believe there's about seven or eight in, in total. And I'll let the, the attorney explain that in a minute. But in 2022, we adopted a million 72,000. Uh, that account is staying flat at a million 72,000 and uh, covers a variety of things. And I'll let John explain in a second from the public defender to labor to legal fees, planning, land use, COA. Uh, insurance, miscellaneous tax appeals, and, and legal fees. So, John, uh, do you want to explain a little bit about your budget? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, so, to to follow up on the manager's comment of what is included within the legal budget, uh, and most of this is set forth in the accounts uh, that are listed on pages 41, 42, and 43 of the budget book. Um, it includes, obviously, the township attorney and general legal matters, uh, that includes, uh, you know, preparation of ordinances, resolutions, attending meetings, giving general legal advice, the, the items that fall within the retainer for the township attorney. Uh, it also includes uh, the labor uh, matters, and that includes disciplinary hearings, negotiations with the various unions in the township, uh, um, civil service issues that we have, uh, which occur when, when we have uh, individuals who uh, sometimes don't qualify and they challenge their qualifications. Um, we have the notices of claim, which is a review of the notices of claim when they come in, uh, and that includes uh, that includes uh, making sure that those notices of claim are that there's a preparation, there's an advance warning between the manager and myself of any potential lawsuits coming down the road. Uh, the COA fair share housing matters and planning and land use and real estate matters. I sort of lumped those into one box together, um, and just so we're clear on that, that doesn't and all these things that I'm going through, they're not all. Uh, me and my firm. These are there's a variety of different uh, individuals, both lawyers and other professionals that are included within the legal budget. For example, on the planning, land use, and real estate matters, it includes our planner Keenan Hughes. So his budget is technically within the legal budget. His spend 
for the township. And, uh, you know, he comes to the zoning subcommittees, obviously very uh, involved right now with what we're doing in the town with the master plan review. Uh, so that's part of the legal budget. Also, sometimes when the, uh, the I believe when the planning board uh, has their issues, it comes in there too, Mr. Manager, isn't that correct? The planning, the planning board and zoning board, when they have to use the, the planner, et cetera, that comes within the legal budget. Uh, as the manager indicated, the prosecutor's salaries, the public defender salaries, uh, the defense of tax appeals, uh, the litigation defense, which are the Title 59 matters, generally uh, the slip and falls that we deal with, uh, those, are, those are within the litigation defense, but that also includes other lawsuits that come against the township, uh, whether they be ones that are covered um, through the insurance fund or outside of the insurance fund coverage. Uh, and then that sort of dovetails into our outside defense attorneys, because when we have matters uh, that are uh, generally outside the insurance fund, we hire outside defense counsel, sometimes even for the ones that are within the insurance fund, and that all falls within the legal budget. And then the last piece, obviously, is the Oprah Council, which is something that was originated last year by the council uh, at their request um, because of the, the, the volume of Oprah requests that the township was receiving and the fact that we had had a number of lawsuits and they you know they wanted to get a handle on that and and ensure that the town has not uh does not get hit because as we know in oprah cases when you get sued they generally are very difficult to win and when you lose them uh you have to pay the other side's attorney's fees as well so they get very expensive uh so that was the that was i think the mindset of why the oprah matters uh were were sort of done like that uh, and uh, if you look again at pages 41 and 42, it uh, lays it out, um, you know, I I'm sort of sad to say, I guess I'll say it that way, that, you know, that this is the first year that the number on the legal budget spend uh, has been higher, uh, you know, during my tenure, uh, you know, than, than, than what it was in the years previously, um, that there's a number of reasons for that. The Oprah issue is definitely one of them. Uh, the number of lawsuits that we had last year were, were part of it as well. And I think also uh, the overall spend on the uh, legal planning and land use, which last year was uh, the budget was 50,000 for that. And the spend was over 200. I think just because of the development issues that were in town and, and, the, and the use of the planner for the various, the various planning issues that, had, that he has to weigh in on. Uh, you know, and he has, to, he has to prepare reports on all the uh, various the developments that are being processed. So, Mr. Manager. No, I think you covered everything, John. You know, again, I just had a list of um, areas that uh, that are included in this budget, and it's important for everyone to know. Again, township attorney, general legal matters, labor legal, labor legal matters, uh, notices of claim, co fair share, and housing matters are included in this as well. Planning, land use, real estate matters, the prosecutor's salaries, public defender salaries, tax appeal defenses, uh, litigation defense, outside defense attorneys, and and Oprah counsel. So again, um, we're keeping it flat this year at one million seventy two thousand dollars. And I neglected to do one thing, which I have in the past previously run through just the the prior the prior numbers, just so that everybody has an, an understanding of where we're where we've gone with the legal department and where I think we're headed. Um, you know, in two thousand fifteen. Um, when my predecessor was here uh, with a different labor council as well, um, the spend was approximately $772,000. And this is only on the town attorney and labor piece. I'm not talking about the other pieces that we've indicated, uh, the prosecutor's salaries and the, and the planner, et cetera. Uh, in 2016, when I came in for part of the year as a labor council, um, that number was 756. So it was slightly lower than the year before. In set 2017, when I came in, that whole year as labor council and half the year as the town attorney, the number went down to 738. Uh, and then the following year when I came in, um, and when I say I, I mean my law firm, it's not just me. And I, I think I make that point at every time I speak before the council, that it's a, a team effort uh, of a number of lawyers that work in my firm, many of whom you have worked with and know. Uh, that year in 2018, it was 635,000, which is over $130,000 less than the original year before we started. The following year was 628. Uh, again, having the labor work and the town attorney in the same office has been a significant reduction uh, in the spend of the town. Uh, 2020 was 622, so that went down again. Uh, 2021 went uh, up to 741. That was sort of the beginning of some of that litigation that I indicated this year uh, took on a, a bigger life. And, and as I indicated, 2022 was a little bit more as 815. Uh, and again, that was more on the Oprah side and the increase in litigation. Does anyone on council have any questions for Mr. Shadinian? Mr. Mayor. 
Yes. Um, where are the, the GIF fees in here? Is that part of the insurance? Is that part of legal budget? That, you want to... That, that doesn't cover, that's not under the GIF fees and not under legal. That's a separate uh, budget account. Um, Councilman Goldberg, uh, do you mean the GIF legal fees or do you mean the cost for the township to the GIF? The GIF legal fees. Yeah. So you want to answer that? So my, under, my understanding is that the GIF legal fees are actually encompassed within uh, sub account 230, the legal fees and expenses number. Uh, and then the, the township for whatever the GIF is covered is reimbursed uh, for those fees. Do we know what percentage were reimbursed? I do not. I do. That not. might be a dean question. That would be something the CFO would be dealing with. What's the fifty thousand dollars in miscellaneous? I think that's a that's a budget item that's been there before my time as sort of a catch-all in case there's something that doesn't fall within one of the other buckets. I don't think. Uh, I don't think we we rarely used it. I'll say it that way. I think if you look at the line forty-three on page 41, uh, it indicates that it was 50,000 and that zero was spent. So it's one that I don't think's ever, I don't recall it ever being used. Maybe if it was, it was a mi very minuscule. So can we get rid of it? So so let me say this, um, and good evening council, Mr. Shadinan. That's um, ESA, our CFO, correct? Yes, uh, ESA with a virus right now, uh, speaking to you from home. So let, let me just say this, before my time as well, and Mr. Shadinian's, the legal budget was essentially set up under like three line items. So you had line item 230, which was for legal fees and expenses. Um, you know, there was a, a plug in large amount. Then I believe under miscellaneous, you had like $50,000. And then under like labor, sub account 220 was the remaining balance of the legal budget. And Mr. Shadani and I have together uh, worked out for the last two to three years, kind of better itemizing that. And that's why last year for the first time, we said, let's throw. 50,000 for planning and see what happens. Uh, and, you know, it's really unpredictable to know how much to put in each subcategory. But the bottom line is in the Edmonds GovTech financial system, no matter where you put these sub amounts, as long as they're charged to the right place, we can track them well. And as long as we don't go over that 1,072, you're okay to spend it. And even if we did go over, we have a budget transfer season between November and the end of March to cover that. So I, I hope that explains it. You know, we can get rid of the miscellaneous line, but I would say you'd still have to allocate that $50,000 elsewhere. Um, just a couple of more questions on the planning, land use, and COA. Um, we had budgeted $50,000, but I see the actuals for 2022 were $200,000. Is that because we're incorporating the planner in there? Or do you know why that's so over? What And then we're still budgeting $50,000 in there. Should that number be higher since the actuals were four times that amount well we i would always like well like i like the fire chief said i would always like all the accounts to be higher and and, and the legal budget is sort of i think mr Vasi was referring to it and i always call it like a unicorn because you never know really what you're going to spend other than the retainer the retainer covers what it covers we know we have meetings we know we have subcommittee meetings we know we have ordinances and resolutions but you never know what lawsuits you're going to get what development projects are going to come online uh, and what's going to come about. So to answer your question, Councilman Goldberg, the, the, that, that number of 207 is predominantly, my understanding, from the planner and, and the work that the other associated professionals do on the planning uh, work for the town with respect to land use, um, and that the, uh, uh, the increase to that line item, um, I think the and again, I'll defer to the manager. We'd have to look, I guess, and see what's in the pipeline for 2020, uh, the, the rest of 2023, uh, and, and see whether there's a, a need to increase that uh, with any projects. I know last year there was a lot, or there were a lot. Uh, Issa, can you give us a, I don't know if you have Edmonds pulled up, but if you can give us a figure on what we paid the planner in 2022? Uh, yes, if you give me a moment, just just um, a word of caution when I give you that figure, not all of it is going to be out of the budget. Some of it is from uh, escrow accounts sometimes for the planner. But yes, if you give me a few moments, I can pull that up. In the meantime, Deputy Mayor Katz, I think you had a question, sir. Yeah, just what's the answer? Can, um, On whether we could take out the 50 G's. Put the 50,000 back in the budget. 
I have no, I have no objection to that. I'll defer. Yeah, I, yeah. I think the CFO said if we do take that out, two seventy miscellaneous, it should stay in the um, one fifty six account. Does that reduce the budget? Uh, I'm sorry, one fifty five account. So um, doesn't reduce. If we continue to keep it in there, it's not going to reduce. But um, if the CFO recommends we completely take it out, that's fifty thousand dollars. We can reduce the budget. CFO, are you recommending that? No. no, and and here's why. See, um, just no, I, I would not recommend that. Just because you cut the budget doesn't mean you cut the expense. I think uh, former Councilman Sohn remembers that line. Um, you know, the, the budget, as one of my um, colleagues who's now retired says, uh, is a living, breathing document. It is subject to change throughout the year with transfers, and you never know what's going to happen. You know, late July last year, um, you know, Dean and I received word that the state health benefits was going to go up almost 24%. You know, these are a lot of things that we don't know, we can't forecast. Um, and so I would say you're, you're, the worst thing you can do is cut the budget to the bone because, you know, heaven forbid there's an emergency like a hurricane or a tropical storm as we've seen in the past several years, and you have to actually run a deficit and raise the money in next year's budget. So I would definitely not recommend you reduce the legal line. I would just say reallocate that money elsewhere. You can transfer from them somewhere else. Does anyone else on council? Mr. Have Mayor, I have one more question. Um, going back to Mr. Mayor. Yeah, the floor is yours. Going back to Oprah, Mr. Shadanian. Um, so you're billing currently about fifteen thousand dollars a month for Oprah, which is one hundred and eighty thousand dollars a year. Um, how how much was within your retainer before versus, I mean, $180,000 a year on Oprah is, is outrageous. I, I'm really curious what, what you're doing. That's almost $200,000 on Oprah. Well, Councilman Goldberg, the, the, the Oprah process before we, we took on that role, if you would have being the primary responder, um, you know, as opposed to the clerk, um, you know, the, what happened was, Mr. Roussillon would deal with all the Oprah requests in the first instance. And, you know, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to speak for the clerk's office and, and, you know, he's, he's got his own presentation. I'm sure that he's going to make about his department, but there were, there were a number of lawsuits. There were a number of issues that came up um, with respect to the volume of Oprah requests that TNEC received. And TNEC has, you know, my experience and I've talked to the city attorney for Hackensack. I've talked to the city attorney for Englewood. We have the most Oprah requests. They, they both told me that we have more, way more Oprah requests when I gave them a number. Uh, and my partner, uh, Richard Trank, who's the township attorney in West Orange, um, does this, utilizes the same process that we have in Teaneck. Um, I actually found out about that after the council recommended that this is the process that they wanted to have. And the council suggested that instead of the, the clerk being the initial responder on anything other than what I'll call a routine Oprah request, that the lawyers look at it first and, and, and assist the township clerk's office with getting the responses out. So because of the volume of Oprah requests that are coming in, and they're all listed on the bill, every single Oprah request is listed on each bill in detail as to what we have to do, what we are doing with them, um, they, you know, that's what's taking the time. Um, and that's why the bill is going by its own. I, I think it has gone down some uh, since we initially got into it, because I think the volume of Oprah requests seems to be slackening a little bit, but I, it, they're still fairly significant. And I, again, I would defer to the clerk. He can talk about the numbers that he gets into his office. And if, and if, the, if the Oprah went back to the clerks, so that would be a $200,000 savings for the resident? It just depends on whether we get sued. I mean, you know, you know, it, it, that's a gamble. I mean, like the reason I think that the Oprah, the council wanted to take Oprah um, in that direction was because they wanted to protect the township from being sued. And since we had those Oprah, uh, uh, we, since we've been handling the Oprah request, it's about nine, almost 10 months now, we haven't had a lawsuit since we started. And other than Goldberg v. Teaneck, which I know, um, how many other Oprah lawsuits were there? Because you said lawsuits. We had the Eli Jones one previous to that. Uh, and then we had, there were a number of other GRC complaints that were filed against the township that we had. Okay. Mr. Clerk, um, I'm sorry, council. No, I just wanted to, to I just wanted to, just as a follow-up, just to, to hold that for, you know, potentially exploring, bringing it back into the clerk. If it's a $200,000 savings for the residents, it's, that's a big impact to a, a big 
budget already. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, uh, if I may, the, oh, the figure, sorry. the figure yeah, you're right. waiting for for the price firm that was priced annually last year was one hundred twenty-eight thousand eight hundred forty-seven dollars and one cent. A majority of that, I would say, closer to a hundred thousand was from the legal budget, with the other twenty-eight thousand or so off the top of my head being from um, trust or escrows. And I, I'd have to figure sort it out, but I would say roughly a hundred thousand dollars from that planning, landing, uh, planning, land use item was the price firm. Debbie Meerkatz. Um, yeah, I fully support and and appreciate having that Oprah person. I think the clerk would probably agree uh, that it's lightened his load and and uh, put in, put the onus in someone else's hand that's more trained uh, to focus on that, so the clerk can focus on what it what he's focusing on. Um, but my question is more is to Councilmember Goldberg's point to now that we have somebody in the building though. Um, four days, which was not there last year. Um, do you think that that could um, that the Oprahs can go directly to that person versus going out and possibly reducing that Oprah, that, that Oprah bill? Well, the person who's working in the building is working on matters in the same manner. So, I mean, if the question would be if we go back in the retainer and he could handle them in the first instance, because if 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 the the council members who are, are newer here, the way the old retainer used to work was that the Oprah matters were were contained within the retainer unless there was going to be litigation or unless the the clerk um uh you know didn't follow like the the guidance that we were giving but that meant that we were had to giving guidance uh on a constant basis and again that when there were delays and other issues between the communication because that's just natural with the volume of Oprah requests that the clerk was receiving that was happening but yes I think to your point Deputy Mayor Katz we certainly could reduce it and I probably is going to going down, um, but I, I still don't think that the clerk is working directly with Mr. Rupp on those. I think he's sending them to other like the paralegals in my office. And again, that's something that we right. engaged in to keep the number, the volume down or the cost down because the paralegals cost about half of what the lawyers cost. Right. Good point. Does anyone else on council have a question for Mr. Shadanian? Mr. Manager, do you have anything you want to add, sir? I, I do not. Okay. Mr. Shadidian, thank you to you and your staff for everything you do for TNEC. Is there anyone on council who want to discuss anything before we request a motion to adjourn? Deputy Mayor G? Um, procedurally, so I was serious about um, front-loading the truck, the second trunk to this year. Procedurally, when do we make those decisions after all the budget meetings? Uh, yes, I actually have capital scheduled for next Thursday, so okay. we can discuss that a little bit more. Okay. And I'll tell you the full amount that we have in capital and what our 5% uh, uh, amount is that we have to put down so we can discuss it more then. Perfect. And we'll look at that um, in conjunction with the out year expected budget increases. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Councilwoman Belcher. Yeah, I, I know, uh, Mr. Manager, you may already have this, um, but I, I think that when we look at about, uh, capital improvements, uh, we could have some type of cost, the cost, but the benefit as well. So some type of cost benefit analysis as to why we would do some of the things like, you know, buy that ladder this year over waiting sure. to next sure. year. So if that would, that would be very helpful to have anything like that okay. as yeah, pertains to capital improvements. Okay, thank you. Deputy yeah. Mayor G, I just have a quick question. So you mentioned if we front load the tr the, the truck with the engine this year um, based on future budgets, what were you thinking would the impact be for future budgets and, and why, what were you just wanting to get your thoughts there? So um, haven't shared our subcommittee meetings minutes yet, but the budget subcommittee met and we had a preview of the expected in, um, increase in our budget over the next two years. And um, after eight years of a 0% increase, um, we were surprised to see, well, actually not surprised, but um, I guess the, the impact has been that now we're probably anticipating a much higher budget increase this year and even substantially higher next year. And so my thought was to create balance so we're not seeing double digit increases next year to front load some of those capital costs um, in this year that are expected for next year. So that was why I brought it up. Um, I don't have the specific numbers memorized, but they were there was a anticipated double digit 
budget increase for next year. So Ms. You, Pilcher? yes, are you saying, uh, Deputy Mayor, that we are, we're not seeing a 0% flatline budget for this year like we've seen over the last seven years? No. Anybody That's eight want? years, eight years. Thank you, Mr. Shores. Anyone else? And Mr. Uh, I guess CFO and, and Dean, so to Deputy Mayor G's point, were those numbers shared with the prior council about the increases? Mr. Manager? Uh, Issa, do you, I, I have the, I have the three-year projection. Uh, those uh, numbers for the increases were in the three-year projection uh, when we discussed the budget last year. Yes, yeah, they were provided to the subcommittee last year. And, uh, you know, the manager and I can make our recommendation, but the ultimate vote lies with the council. So the four-ish percent we're looking at this year, four to five percent, the, the prior council was aware about? Yeah, that was the projection in the 2023 uh, projected budget. And there was also a projection for 2024. What was that amount? For which year? 2024, based on last year, and then this year's projection 2024 for 2024. 4.3 and 2024 was 7.75. And what are we looking at now for 2024? Uh, well, you're looking at, a, a, again, these are projected numbers, uh, roughly a, a $541 increase to the average household. What's the percentage? It right now looks like 12.6. So almost 13%. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Ms. Pelcher? I'm just curious, like, is, is that final, uh, Mr. Manager? Are, are those, are they still, you guys are still tweaking and sharpening your the, pencils? Uh, for this year, we're still, you know, sharpening pencils, of course. We always do that until council is ready to do, to adopt the budget. But again, those are the projected uh, percentages for 2024 based on what we know our liabilities are. And, um, you know, I, I don't know what's going to come in with added assessments. I don't know what's going to come in with uh, fees that we take in. So again, there'll be some some changes with that, but just on the surface, based on our uh, financial obligations, uh, you know, with the and speaking to the auditor, these are our projections for 2024 and 2025. Deputy Mayor G. I just want to ask the previous council, um, given that you were aware of these these projections, I want to know what why did you decide to maintain zero percent tax increases last year? First of all, oh, I'll take that. Is that is or, 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 and I can take it also. Be Mayor Katz first, please. Yeah, um, as you see from the budget and you hear, hear from uh, our CFO, these budgets are fluid. And uh, I will always continue to push for a 0%, even this year. Um, having a $50,000 miscellaneous just in case means that a resident has to take money out of their pocket just in case. Now, if you're comfortable with that, that's your that's your feelings. I'm not comfortable with having residents. I'd rather have them in their pocket, not in um, just in case pockets. We have a responsibility to manage properly. We have a great manager. You hear amazing department heads. And if we ask the department heads to be a little bit more um, better with the spending, they'll figure out how to how to be better with the spending. And that's that is what we did, and that's what we're going to continue to do. And that's why I'm going to support a zero percent. Okay, so let me ask that question. Follow up to that is that can, what, I, can I ask because I haven't spoken yet, Ms. Belcher, Just because we haven't heard Karen speak, sure, no problem. Um, so, so we're going to floor so is yours. A, a question to the manager and the budget subcommittee: How much of this increase were things that were not predictable, like increases for the GIF and the um, state health health benefits? What what were we talking about? I know there was a lot that was dumped into this budget that we actually had no control over and couldn't have been foreseen. Uh, you know, some again, yeah, some of that, of course, was was the GIF. We didn't anticipate, um, you know, a, a point, uh, you know, one point one, one point two tax points going up. Um, you know, again, even though we we did save money uh, exiting uh, SHBP, there was uh, still with Horizon self funded an eight percent increase. Um, we had, you know, BCU and uh, BCUA increases. We had pension increases. Uh, so, yeah, there were some things out of our control. We had the 
a uh, special emergency that, you know, again, we didn't plan on, but we had to do, we had a lot of retirements. So, you know, there are some factors that inflated this year's budget. Anissa, if you want to elaborate a little more, and please feel free. Yeah, or yeah, before we, Issa goes, uh -huh. can I just, can I end my Go second ahead, part Morgan. and you can answer all at once. If we had started eight years ago, like the Board of Ed and increased taxes 2% year after year after year and compounded. So we, we may not have had a 4% or an 8% or a 12% increase when something came up. But what would the average homeowner be paying right now this year as, you know, compounded all the years since then, like the Board of Ed does, where it may not be a shock, but you're still paying more each year because of that. I have, I have a point. To that. Wait, wait, I so, think she had a question in there for Mr. Abbasi. And Mr. Abbasi, the floor is yours, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, as, uh, as the manager alluded to it, he presented last week, all of these, uh, this is the 16th slide in his presentation, all of these cost increases beyond our control totaled $3.5 million or a 6.79% tax increase. So, I mean, we could have most likely easily gotten down to a zero again this year. Uh, you know, the manager and I are not the biggest fans of zero, but we go with what the council majority would like. I mean, I'm, I'm also going to advocate for this. Budgets are about trade-offs. We could do whatever the majority of council wants with a budget, but it does come out of cost either now or later. So, you know, at the same time, the department heads, I applaud them with the manager. We always, you know, tell them to come in with, you know, at least flat or reasonable budgets. They always do. The department heads, for the most part, do watch their spending. The purchasing agent and I monitor their spending and the deputy CFO, and we do our best to keep our costs tight. One thing I am proud of is we've never had to raise money in a future year for having an operating deficit. You know, we are not one of the towns, at least in my knowledge of Burton County, that have such a tight budget that if, heaven forbid, you had a Hurricane Ida or Hurricane Sandy happen, that there's no money to pull away from and recoup from FEMA. You know, we did do our very best uh, effort and brought back in over $500,000 from FEMA last year. Uh, but at the same time, you know, as the council majority said, it's a, it's a trade-off. You either keep the money in the residents' pockets uh, or they, it comes around next year. One more thing I'll add. Even if we didn't raise taxes and had a ninth year of a 0%, guess who the resident comes to complain to that their taxes went up? Me. And I've actually debated, she, she had passed away last year, a resident in November 2021 for 45 minutes. I actually debated with her cordially. She wants to speak to the manager. She said, you know, he controls the taxes for the Board of Ed. And I'm not knocking the Board of Ed. This is straight fact. Well, ma'am, we don't control the Board of Ed's taxes. That's on their end. You have to go at the time down to one Marison Street. But the municipal rate did not go up. And she said, yes, it did. I said, ma'am, I will show you your tax bill. It did not go up for 45 minutes. She would not agree with me. We had to agree to disagree. So even if we did a zero council, residents still think their taxes went up. And, and they will come blame us. Thank you. I took just a comment. Oh, after my, I'm sorry. Mr. Oh, is that Karen? Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, Karen. Can I just finish up? Because yeah, I know it's hard to you, see. Karen. We, uh, Ms. Belcher has been raising her hand for a little bit. Yep. I, I just, I haven't spoken. So if I could finish up and then I'm, I'm done. Go just ahead. to say that it's very simplistic to say that the budget's going up a lot this year, next year, and the year after because of what was done before. But, but really it's being simplistic and it's trying to lay blame. Um, we, we deal the cards that were dealt and we try to work to the best of our ability to help the residents keep the budget as low as possible. And I think that's what we're doing this year also. I don't think that changes. I think once you sit in the chair and, and you're taking money from people, you try to do it in the best way you can to hurt them in the least way that you can. Ms. Belcher? I think there's something to be gleaned from, from uh, historic things that you've done in terms of how the council has addressed this. When these... Uh, department heads came before you over the last eight years, basically stating what their needs were. And you said, no, we want to keep a zero budget. What did you do? You just told them to go back and just zero out, just not, not apply for things, not, what, what did you do? What, I mean, clearly this is floating downstream. And this is, this is something that's, that, you know, you can't go from zero to 60 in eight years and not expect residents to be concerned. You know, I mean, there's something about financial responsibility. There's something about forecasting. It's something, there's something to be said about those things. So now we, as a new, new council, we're faced with going from zero for eight years 
to a 5% or 6%, 13% increase, is that fair to the residents? Is that fair for Ms. Ms. Uh, uh, Mr. Issa to have to explain to a resident? I think that that's a, that's a hard pill to, to swallow for any homeowner. Yeah, that, that's, our, that's our false. That's absolutely false. That we did, it, yes, I'm sorry, my camera's messed no, up. Go ahead, so I'll, I'll, wait, I'll wait my turn. And I'll, I'll wait my turn. And I would like to say something. Go ahead, Mr. Schwartz. Yes, that's we we do is zero percent every single year. In in the manager on his slides, and the CFO made it very clear. Maybe we need to do this again. The one time expenditures are the only reason, only reason why we're not at a ninth straight zero. Not because anyone who's sitting up there or anyone who's not sitting up there. Now we're being so we'll be at a four percent instead. So eight straight zeros, and now. Of 4%. Now, if you want to sit there and make this into politics, which please, no matter how calm you're saying this, you are, and say, well, maybe in two years from now, someone just decided we maybe need 10, 12%. Let's have a conversation about two years. That is absolutely politics and fear mongering uh, and dead percent, wrong. Please, Mr. Schwartz. And dead wrong. I'm done. Mr. Schwartz, I just have a quick question, just to follow up to what second, you just said. Really quick, really quick question. No, 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 please hold on a second. Just hold on a sorry, second. Sorry, sorry. Mayor Cass, did you want to say anything? Yeah, I mean, I think, listen, I think uh, Deputy, um, Council Member Schwartz said it right. They're just playing politics. They can't figure out why we got a zero. and They don't want to sit there and sharpen the pencils. They don't want to take out the $50,000 here and the $50,000 there, which was a miscellaneous, which was pointed out that no one's ever touched. So they sit here and they say, okay, well, then let's just keep raising taxes. You know what? Keep blaming other people instead of taking responsibility, and that'll get you far. In the meantime, you're hurting our Teaneck residents. The, the, the uh, CFO just said that they could have figured out how to do a zero if, the, if that was the wishes of the council. Is it, it doesn't seem like it's the wishes of the council. It seems well, like wait, it's if better I could say, to try I could just to play politics quick. with the residents' money. And that's what hurts our employees. All right, if I could just say something Mr. really Mayor. quickly, just really quickly, I'll, I'll be brief because um, Deputy Mayor G asked all council members who voted on the, the, the previous budgets. I voted on two budgets so far um, during my tenure at council. And the reason why I supported the zero budget, just so that everybody knows, frankly, is because we were in the throes of a pandemic and there were a lot of people struggling financially. And so I did not want to raise taxes on our residents because of seniors living on fixed incomes and people just really, really struggling to find work and keep jobs. But unfortunately, I'm of the opinion that taxes do have to go up this year. I don't want to raise taxes. Nobody wants to raise taxes, but I think they do have to go up a little bit. And I'm just hoping that this council can work together during the remainder of this month to come up with a solution because we still have a lot of people in Teaneck that are struggling financially a lot of people, and I'm hoping that we can work together. I know that we're still working out some kinks. We're still filling each other out because it's only been about 75 days since the reorganization, but I am hoping that we can keep it civil, professional, but free and open discussion on everything, and that's all I wanted to say about my two votes during these past two years, but Ms. Belcher, the floor is yours, ma'am. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate your explanation. I really do. Um, I think that just in that explanation, I think it, it is a it is a question of what is our mission? What do we want to do? And it may quite frankly be something as simple as we're looking at the residents, we're making a determination that we don't want to, um, to burden them with an increase, keeping in mind that we have a revaluation that we're staring down, okay? So we may collectively as leaders say, okay, what, what is, perhaps it is a zero, uh, percent uh, budget increase. Perhaps that is the answer. But what I'm saying is that for eight years, it was done a certain way. And now it's we're basically saying to these department heads who, right, I'm sure over the last eight years, they had requests. You know, I'm sure they had requests. So what did you tell them eight, over these past eight years? No, we're not going to to increase the budget, we're not going to pass on um, costs to, or to our homeowners. I mean, you know, all I'm saying is let's just be for real. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, let's for, just be for, for real. real. We, the, okay. the budget has but, a significant amount of money that's collected every year from the taxpayers. And we have to live within our means. 
And that's how everyone lives their lives. And Absolutely. just because your government Positive. doesn't give one you the right time, please. Tax, one at a time, please. to tax residents because you can't figure out how to manage a $50,000 miscellaneous that's never been used and take it out of a budget and who knows what others. Now, I'm not on the it's budget subcommittee, but maybe you should go back and figure out how to get it as low as you can or continue to sit here and try to play politics no and politics. really hurt everybody, okay? The, None, no politics. Okay. All right, one at a time, please, Mr. Katz. Are, are you done for the moment? I'm done. Deputy Mayor G. Just to clarify on the 50,000, what I heard Issa say is he needs the full million dollar budget. It's been a place where that 50000 sits in miscellaneous, but it really isn't miscellaneous. It's going to get used somewhere in that legal budget. He needs the full amount. He doesn't know where it's going to go because it moves year to year. So I, I think I just want to get clarity. It's not missile. It's not made up number. He needs the full budget. It moves from account to account every year, but he needs the full budget. We're not saying it's not we don't spend. Look at the line action. If you listen to his explanation, he was trying to say he needs the full million seventy two budget to cover all the items. It changes year to year drastically. You can't predict what that is, but it's around that million dollar line item. And Issa, please feel free to clarify, but that's what I heard. So yeah, so, so De it. Deputy Mayor. Cut it. Go ahead, Mr. No, Bossy. So so Deputy Mayor G is correct. The budget was for a million seventy two. I believe we spent a million eighty seven. So yes, you would have, you 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 were out fifteen thousand dollars last I checked, which was uh, made through a budget transfer. Is that council? I council. I, just, I, have, a, I have a hard time. Okay. Uh, the floor is yours, Karen. Thank you. So, you know, I think we all want to do the same thing, right? We want to give everyone in town what they need, without taking money from them at a time where inflation is above six percent. And so we can go back and we can play politics and we can lay blame on zeros and we can go back and we can say department heads didn't get what they want, but they did. It's just a matter of balance like we all do in our homes with money. But if we're gonna get somewhere, we're gonna work on this budget. We can forecast out to the best we can, but there are still gonna be things that drop on us. But the look that I saw on council, it, it's interesting when you're on Zoom as opposed to sitting and facing the audience, you can see everybody's faces. And the look when this whole conversation just went a different way, where Deputy Mayor G started speaking and Council Member Goldberg has a terrible poker face and started smiling. And then um, Council Member um, Belcher jumped in, like this is too important to be a political stunt. So happy to work with you to get things down as best we can to still give the residents what they need. But if we're gonna sit up there and say that we haven't been giving our department heads enough to do with what they what they need. Of course, we would give the DPW anything they needed if we could afford it. That's not fair. That's playing politics. All right, before I call on you, Ms. Goldberg. Wait, I have a question, not a- please keep, I have, wait, I have a please keep it professional. No insults, and I don't think that was perceived or meant to be an insult, but no passive aggressiveness. Let's just please keep it professional and discuss I, budget. I have a question um, for Goldberg, the CFO. The I have a question for the CFO. Um, so, the, the 4.3 that was forecasted for the increase for 2023 um, was before the increases that we knew about for this year. So are you saying that in order, so what, that 4.3, obviously 4.3 to 4.9 is, is very impressive given that we had a huge um unforeseen increase of, of other expenses. So I'm very impressed with that, you know, um, that, that 0. 0.6, um, and it wasn't higher, um, but that 4.3 was still known. So what, what is in there that you're saying that we theoretically could have gone to a zero that would it have, I mean, if it's just the, um, unknown increases that we got at the end of last year, why forecast 4.3 for this year, last year? Mr. Abbasi, before you answer that, um, our police officers, chief, chief, sir, you, you guys don't have to stick here, stick around for, nobody has any more questions for our police department or fire department, correct? Because it seems like we're going to continue this discussion going forward. John, you have to stay though. Um, but, but gentlemen, thank you so, so very much for your presentations. Thank you so, so very much for all your hard work and your dedication. And we hope you have a good evening. Mr. Abbasi, I think that question was for you, correct, sir? Yes, Mayor. So to, count, to answer Councilman Goldberg, uh, again, you know, budgets are very fluid. They change. These are forecasts. Um, you know, our salaries and wages, you know, I, we had forecasted 
uh, over $400,000 increase. When we got to this year, um, you know, that was not the case because we had subsidized it with grant money and you saw a slight increase this year in salaries and wages. Um, you know, something I'm going to focus on, the manager and I don't have, you know, uh, you know, realm of the unseen. We don't have a crystal ball. So, you know, when individual fire and police officers, rank and file officers file their retirement papers, um, you know, they don't do so telling us on January 1st, hey, I'm retiring this year. We might not know until sometime in April. We might not know until January 1st that they're looking to retire in March. There might be some fire and police uh, officers who retire on July 1st. Uh, it's a guessing game. And so we do our best to forecast, but, uh, you know, terminal leave is a big item that, we you know, we've had to split over five years because we knew the budget could not handle, you know, three tax points in one year. And so we've taken the option of that five-year emergency. So to answer Councilman Goldberg, yes, that 4.3 forecast was uh, a year ago this time, and we didn't know about the health benefit increase until July. A lot of things did change in that forecast. For example, I have it open on my screen. We had forecasted BCUA would be up $306,000. It was actually down $80,000. So that's almost one tax point saved right there. Um, you know, Thankfully, our uh, P PERS, the pension bill for the rank and file officers, for rank and file employees like myself, did not go up $172,000 like we forecasted. It went down. Uh, and the fire, the PFRS bill actually went up slightly. You know, there's a lot of things that ebbed and flowed in that. But, you know, if we're proposing a 4.9% increase, I just did simple math. And uh, as I stated, the budget slide that the manager had last week had a 6.79 forecast. You could see that we would have comfortably been under that, you know, under what we came in at 4.99. We would have been at, you know, more closer to a zero and probably had suggested a 1% increase. So I hope I can answer. I hope that answered your question. Thank you, Mr. And just Bob. one more, one more follow up, up to that. The, wait, just one more follow up to that. So the the four point nine percent increase this year predominantly is cost beyond any member of this council's control. Is that correct? One hundred percent. Yes, one hundred. So not one single member of this council could have foreseen the the costs that are part of this 4.9% because it's mostly unforeseen costs as presented by the manager, correct? Yeah, yes, 100%. I mean, that, you know, that slideshow is prepared by myself and the manager. You know, it, it's in conjunction. I work with him every single day. I've known the manager for 13 years now. Um, you know, this is not made up. You know, I'm not doing this for fun. You know, this is a livelihood. I, I treat the town trips money as if it's my own. And if anybody knows me, you know, prior to a six year uh, Volkswagen Jetta, I did drive a 19 year old Toyota Corolla before I lost it uh, to a snowstorm last year. But yes, you know, we are very frugal, very wise our spending. We have a stellar purchasing agent, a stellar attorney that we consult with all of our purchasing that comes before you, any bidding that comes before you. Um, if you ask other towns, they literally cross things off and do as they please. We don't do that in TDAC. We really watch ourselves, watch our spending, make sure we spend legally and take advantage of our cooperative agreements and shared services where we can. And and the last thing for, for 2024, um, the ARP money, the $2 million, um, that was, that's not available at all, right? So um, could that have been spread out instead of using it all in one chunk? I mean, over the cost of, uh, course of a, a few years or because now we were completely short 2.1. We don't have that ARP money next year at all. And Ms. Goldberg, so, if you don't mind, after Mr. Abbasi answers this question, I'm going to go to another council member. Yes. So, yeah, so in theory, yes, that the 2.1 million that we received uh, last year for this year could be spread out through 2026. You have to encumber the funds by uh, the end of this year. Um, actually, yeah, and expend it by 2026. So you could spread it out essentially between this year and next year if you were so inclined as a council majority. Ms. Belcher. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, and thank you, Issa, for that um, uh, detailed explanation. Um, so I just wanna just say here that um, I think we're all adults in the room and I think that we can uh, really get through this budget process with, um, you know, with a win for most importantly, um, our residents um, and also for this, the, the departments that support our residents. 
Um, so I would just like to know, is there any way in which we are potentially, and this may be the subcommittee question, uh, are you guys looking at uh, a 0% budget as an option? Uh, and if so, I'd like to see if that, what that would look like as a potential, um, you know, budget for, for you know, our, even our next meeting, we don't have to talk about it now, but uh, I think that, um, you know, I'd like to see what that what that would look like. What would we have to trim, Mr. Manager, in order to get there? We we, we covered a little bit of that. Uh, um, Deputy Mayor G, uh, Council Member uh, Goldberg, we did cover a little bit of that at the uh, subcommittee. So I, I think you have a good idea what we would have to do. But, you know, keep in mind, if we use those monies that the auditor said would be available in 2023, uh, those are one-time shots that we're not going to be able to use in 2024. So we have to be very careful. Mr. Manager and, and Mr. Abbasi, I'm, I'm not trying to create more work for you guys because I know how hard you work. Um, in years past, you, you you shared with the budget committee what the budget would look like at 0%, at 1%, at 2%. Is there any way to do something similar like that, but with realistic numbers, whatever those numbers might be. Like I know right now it's being proposed at 4.9. Like, is there any way, depending on what the budget committee says, to see what it would look like at three, a two, a one, or zero? But then again, I know that that's very labor intensive and you guys are always working on a million things, but right. is anything like that possible, but it, realistically? It, yeah, it can, it can certainly be done with different percentages and we'll tell you where we would have to pull it from. Hey, Deputy Mayor G. I just want to respond to Councilwoman Belcher's question. Um, from my very preliminary look at the budget, um, my concern is that if we did do a zero percent budget this year, um, we would not be doing we'd be doing the town uh, an injustice because we would have to let parks go into disrepair. We would not be able to buy new trucks that you know the fire department needs. Um, we would have to cut things that are necessities. And guess what? We'd have the same problem next year. You cannot continue to push these costs down the road because it just creates more costs down the line to ultimately our residents. So okay. I, I think that we can look at a 0% um, budget, but I, I'm really concerned that we've pushed things too far already. Ms. Belcher? Yeah, so it sounds like, um, Deputy Mayor, uh, that you are uh, looking at things from a fiscal responsible perspective. It looks like you are considering forecasting what does it mean to keep the budget at 0% and what impact it would have long-term on our township. So that's what it seems like you're doing. You're doing a bit of forecasting and what impact it would have long-term. Thank you for that. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Deputy Mayor Katz. I like your idea about coming up with that uh, forecasting of the zero, the two, and the 4%, um, the Whatever way you suggested. Realistically. For the, yeah, and what that looks like. Is there, but I feel bad because they work so hard. Um, is there anyone else on council that would like to make a comment or ask a question? Can we adjourn? This was a nice, healthy debate. Motion to adjourn, Schwartz. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Thank you, everyone.